50 seconds. And actually, Jeff, the boats can come out on the water now because of the pit area being so far away. They are able to come out at the six minute mark. The drones are going up in the air. We're ready to go racing. That bucket list with that Tennessee orange, very appropriate in this neck of the woods with the Tennessee Valley. And boats are leaving the pit area right now, Brad Luce. As we begin early on this Sunday morning in Guntersville, Alabama, for today's Southern Cup for H1 Unlimited Hydroplanes. Also, too, we'll have activity from Grand Prix America and Pro Light presented by Go Lithium. First boat out, the Beacon Electric, followed by the Bucket List Racing, then Beacon Plumbing and Trailing, leaving the pit dock, Goodman Real Estate. Brad, the five-minute period is come and gone. Let's get this started. Let's get this party started. It is day three of three. The green flag is on the race course. Our four boats are at the top end. J. Michael Kelly comes into our Heat 2A, presented by the Guntersville Water Board, with 450 points. The boat is extremely quick. What we've noticed about J. Michael Kelly's bright red boat is how smooth it is on the water. He's followed by teammate Corey Peabody in the Beacon Plumbing. Beacon Electric is the red one. Beacon Plumbing is the white one. And here's your top qualifier. Bucket List Racing with Dustin Eccles had that 171 mile per hour lap. All three of those guys went around the race course smartly. And as he loves to do, he likes to do things a little differently. Andrew Tate just tooling around the top end of the race course. Tate's got a place he wants to be on this race course at a certain time. And He'll find a way to get there. Boy, right now, Brad, at that four-minute mark, I think he'll have to come down to turn number one and obviously go down the back straightaway. Will he elect to cut in where J. Michael Kelly is, or will he go back to turn two? Well, we'll see. He's got to go all the way down now. And Kelly and Peabody both cut the race course. That's a legal maneuver. Now, to our new race fans here, Jeff Ayler, if you haven't seen this before, everything is done on a clock start. We are at the start-finish line. We're three minutes and 30 seconds until the start. The idea is to put your boat on the starting line at full song the tick before the clock strikes zero. If you jump the start and are across the line before the clock strikes zero, you run an extra lap. You're not going to win. We go three laps in these preliminary heats. we got a five-lap final coming up later on in the day. But right now, with 3.10, they're in what we call the milling period, Jeff. Brad, I spoke to an H1 Unlimited pilot this morning. I won't name who it was because I don't want to give away their secrets, but I'll give it away anyway. 22 second mark, the entrance pin of turn number two on the back chute. They're looking at about that 10 second mark off the exit pin of turn number two of the start finish line. If you jump the gun in H1 Unlimited hydroplane racing, that is a one lap penalty that takes you away from the checkered flag and those precious points up toward the top. Yeah, this is going to be interesting now because as the boats come out of the pit area, their lane is not assigned to them. They fight for lanes, and at 2.30 before the start, they're going to have to go all the way up to the top end, which means they're going to go all the way around the race course. Andrew Tate has parked himself right now in lane one. Could that change? Yes, it could. Honestly, Jeff, I'm not sure it's going to. I think they've got to go all the way around, and Tate's just going to hang in lane one if he wants it. Right now, Kelly's in two, Peabody's in three. That's going to put our top qualifier on the far outside. And remember, Dustin Eccles needs some points. He jumped his start in the first heat, and although he was the first boat across the finish line, he was relegated to fourth place with the one-lap penalty. So here comes Tate down across start-finish line inside of two minutes. Tate's in one, Kelly's in two, Peabody in three, Eccles is going to come down behind everybody. Right now, Brad, by the alignment, I like where Eccles is, but the problem where he is, he's on the outside. Yeah, I'm a little worried about Andrew. You know my unofficial timing marks. I always say, yeah, you don't want to be down there at that entrance, pin in the lower corner at 130. It's 130 right now. Yeah, I think Andrew Tate, no doubt, early. It looks like he will cruise around the course. You have to be above 80 miles per hour in the warm-up period prior to the start. So Andrew Tate in turn number one, leisurely working the buoy row in the Goodman Real Estate. He is followed by J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Plumbing, then Corey Peabody back behind Kelly in the Beacon Plumbing. Now here comes Dustin Eccles up on the outside in the Tennessee Orange Bucket List Racing. We are now coming up on 55 seconds until the start. Brad, by my view, I think Tate's early 
Eccles could be the best of all, but he is on the outside. He is on the outside. He's just on the outside of Corey Peabody. 45 seconds until the start. The white flag is up. We're going to go three times around. There's 400 points laying on the table. You need to earn points, 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 as we like to say in these preliminary heats, to find your way into the final. Tate's going to take him up to the top end of the race course with 30 seconds until the start. Followed in lane number two by J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Electric. Then it is his teammate, Corey Peabody. He's in lane three. Eccles is going to be on the outside. You see Dustin starting to wind it up on the outside. You said 12 seconds off the exit pin. Let's take a look. We are 12 seconds right now. It's going to be getting pretty close to time to put the foot down. You see Tate can't get into it yet. The others can, but now Andrew does. We are three seconds, two seconds, one. Mark, boy, from my view, it looks like it's a legal start, but we'll get it from the officials. Andrew Tate on the inside was the first boat across the line. He broke the clock and will get down to turn number one first. And he's got the lead as he goes through the lower corner. Andrew Tate, but boy, has he got company. He's got Kelly, he's got Peabody, and he's got Eccles. But off the corner, it is Andrew Tate. And then look on the outside. It is a legal start. It's a legal start, Jeff. Look at Corey Peabody on the outside in two. Tate made a dynamite start in lane number one, leads it in turn number two. Corey Peabody is hauling the mail in second in Beacon Plumbing. Back in third, we got side-by-side -side action between Kelly and Eccles, but off the corner, it'll be Tate in front, but Peabody charging hard in second. Tight off the buoy row is Andrew Tate. He'll come down and put one of the books, but his right side rear view mirror is full of Corey Peabody. Peabody's closed the distance. He's back by about three boat lengths as they finish lap number one and go down to the lower end of the race course. It's lap number two of three. Tate on the inside with the lead, but he's got Corey right with him. Peabody back about three boat lengths. They're gonna come off the corner very close, Jeff. Peabody's making a charge. Excellent dueling here in Guntersville, Waterboard Unlimited. Heat 2A, we see Tate, Peabody hidden in the rooster tail on the back straightaway. Your race is for first in 2A. Tate maintains that lead. They enter turn number two, Peabody is there. Tate is there. Now they are side by side in turn number two at the apex. Uh, you know I love to say this, Jeff, but this is as good as it gets in H1 Unlimited Racing. You've hooked up two boats side by side. There's Tate, there's Peabody. They're gonna come down to pick up a white flag with one to go, and they're virtually gonna be Dead even, Corey Peabody and Andrew Tate. Tate by a boat length at the end of two. Third place is gonna go to Dustin Eccles in the bucket list racing. J. Michael Kelly trails in fourth down to the lower end of the race course. This is the final lap. You've gotta get the checkered flag this time for those 400 points. Looks like one boat coming off the corner. There are two of them right there looking for Corey and there he is. Sticks his nose out about a boat length, Jeff. Beautiful dueling here in Guntersville. Waterboard Unlimited 2A. Peabody in front by a boat link. Tate flies the Goodman Real Estate. The battle is up in the front. Tate has the advantage on the inside, shorter way around. They are side by side again at the apex. Final turn, final lap of 2A. Here at 400 points, laying right here at the finish line. Has Peabody got enough? Has Tate got acceleration? They're gonna come down and pick up the checkers, and it's gonna be Corey Peabody in the Beacon Plumbing. He will come home first. Andrew Tate Goodman Real Estate will come home in second place. Bucket list racing with Dustin Eccles in third, and Jay Michael Kelly will come home in fourth place. Now that's a good way to start the day, Mr. Ayler. Brad Luce, great dueling here in Guntersville Waterboard, Unlimited Heat 2A. While you were calling the boats in turn number one, the drone shot up above entering turn number one on lap number one. There was enough lanes there, but J. Michael Kelly was back at the start. And when he went into turn number two, turn number one and lane number two, he was getting in a little bit of the wash of the Goodman Real Estate to his inside, but Andrew had enough boat lengths. That's some of the reasons, I think, why J. Michael Kelly fell back to the fourth position. Valuable 225 points to the bucket list racing in third, but the off-season work by Daryl Strong's team with Beacon Plumbing, they're on their A game. They are absolutely on their A game, and you saw Jeff Campbell walk by here. He looked over here and gave us a little bit of a smile. I think he wanted to finish one, two, but he has got to be happy with that first place finish touch, in that U9. Touch my arm. Shaking. You are shaking, <laughs> Well, That's a good way to start the day. So. 
Guntersville, Alabama. How about that for starting today? Is that good stuff? I hope you like it. Hope you like it because we've got a lot more of it yet to come. But what that did, Jeff, and you touched on it with regards to J. Michael Kelly and he was back a little bit at the start, it shows A, how important the start is, and B, how that particular point is magnified by the fact that these boats are so fast, you don't dare be a tick or two late because you're going to get left behind by the time you run down to the start line. And, you and you're not going to be.